My name is Petula, your host here at All Things Agile. And for this video, I would like to help you understand a term very much used with Agile teams, and it is cross-functionality. So let's start with the basics. What are cross-functional teams? It is a team to begin with. So a group of people working together towards a common goal, a group of people who trust each other. And the add-on in here is that they usually belong to different functions, different departments in the organization. So the composition could be not only folks from different departments, but also folks from outside of the org, such as suppliers, customers themselves, and consultants. The key point is that you have in the team all the knowledge that you need to accomplish the team's goals. It is not about everybody being able to do all sorts of work. This might be something more related to having a T-shaped profile, which is something that could help but is not required. It is also not about people doing all the work together, like literally sitting together and working. That could be more something like pairing or swarming. Those are useful, those are really cool, great collaboration, but you do not need those to have a cross-functional team. What are some of the benefits that you can think of of having a cross-functional team? Let me know in the comments down below, or maybe pause this video and think through before I let you know the three ones that I really like to highlight. The first benefit is that a cross-functional team is able to make and carry decisions that are not just unilateral from the boss to the team. They are autonomous and accountable for implementing the solutions. Now, they can have directions coming from managers, of course, and in an ideal scenario, the manager is part of the team. It is a rather flatter structure, if you will, and it allows companies to be more dynamic and to have networks of people operating together instead of a pyramid shape of execution. The second benefit is language or language uniformization and clarity. Overall, because the team members represent a wide variety of departments from the organization, nobody gets really stuck in business jargon or technical lingo. They all speak a more clear language and more closer to the user as well. That is the sort of thing that actually allows, uh, for example, data visualization systems to show complex information in a rather intuitive manner for the users. It is how you hide complexity, how you make that simple for the user. And the number three is that there is a lot of range of scope and information in a cross-functional team. Basically, the team can understand from customer to operations how the whole organization works, what really matters, what are the risks um, and the impact of decisions. And because of that, they can really be creative and innovative in their solutions. And they do have the depth of knowledge that is required to implement those solutions. An example would be a team that has access to and uses dashboards and information about their customer segment in the market, and they are able to, based on that data, conduct their own experiments, create their surveys, and even figure out their own prototypes. And from what they learn there, the team can then decide how to proceed with the product or with the upcoming feature, how to market it, how to sell it, how to test it, deliver, etc., etc. It's really an example of autonomy. Many companies does that, and I know that Booking.com has an example of just being able to provide thresholds that their teams use and have access to, and so long as the features that they put out there live in the market respect the numbers in those thresholds, they are all good to go. You will find those teams in startups quite easily, but it's much, much harder to find them in bigger, complex organizations. Why do you think that is? My take is that in bigger organizations, there is a very clear demarcation between strategy, tactics, and operations. Now, you could argue if that clear demarcation is really needed, but that's not the topic of today's video. So for the topic of today's video, if I could summarize, I would say the benefits of having cross-functional teams are higher productivity, better uh, coordination in communication, spanning organizational boundaries, better decision-making, better problem-solving, 
and an overall reduction on cycle time of delivery, hitting the market earlier. Now we are left with the question, is your team really cross-functional? Most teams out there, even in organizations adopting Agile, are not cross-functional. Sure, in a software team, you would have the developers, you would have testers, analysts, but those are more roles than actually cross-department. Um, cross-department would be if you could have folks really from the business, like people from sales or customer experience, if you could have people from marketing, people from risk and legal. Of course, um, it all depends on your team's mission and then the team composition would be in support of that. The litmus test is this and it is hard. If you need help from someone outside of your team to have your work completed and possibly in the hands of the customer, chances are your team is not cross-functional. So what then, you just abandon the idea? No, absolutely not. Try and get as close to cross-functionality as possible. I mean, some is still better than none. Keep in mind that cross-functionality in the end depends on organizational design, which is something that has started to be challenged in the, in the past few years. Um, it's picking up with the notion that you should be organizing for and not against complexity. And for that, there's a book that I suggest you to read. And just be aware that organizational design is not something that you would do all alone as the agile leader in the organization. You will be coaching your peers and your superiors to definitely achieve some results of that. But know that the journey is long and like anything in agile, it goes through experimentation, it goes iteratively. You don't just design the org from scratch. Another thing I would mention is that it's not because you might not have cross-functional teams that you shouldn't try and encourage cross-functional collaboration. Start thinking on how you can help teams and departments share information that they have and decisions that they make, knowledge, anything so that others can build on top of what they are already working, aligned, coordinated, instead of each department having to have their own goals, their own agenda, and maybe sometimes even working against each other, kind of like competing even though they're in the same organization. I hope this video was useful slash informative and let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions still and then go check out the blog post in which I give you a few ideas on how to coach for cross-functionality. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.